is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back with the second show today of Quick Hits. Like I said, Quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day, uh, 8 to 10 minutes, just to keep you up to date on all the latest boxing news and rumors. So if that's the kind of content you want, you want to be kept up to date real quick, uh, twice a day, please like and subscribe, share on all forms of social media, share with a friend, uh, hit the like and subscribe button, hit the little bell icon, um, get notified every time we go live, every time we do a show, every time we drop new content. Uh, but uh, we did the first show earlier today on uh, the uh, news that uh, Fortuna Garcia, Ryan Garcia Fortuna, uh, was ordered by the WBC and was uh, being sent to purse bids on April 16th. Now we are back for the second show. Uh, we're going to recap a really fun Ring City USA card. I mean, a really, really fun Ring City USA card. Um, in the main event, Amanda Soriano. Amanda Serrano, I gotta stop that. Amanda Serrano really shined. Uh, it, it was her turn to take the spotlight, and, and she did just that. Um, you know, you, you had um, Super Bad this past week, uh, who, who looked spectacular in staking her claim. Um, then you had before that, you had Clarissa Shields staking her claim as you know the best pound for pound woman in the, in, in the sport. And so this was Serrano's turn. You know, it was Toronto's opportunity to really shine. Um, and she did that. Um, I mean, she fought a really good opponent. Opponent Daniela Bermudez. Um, the multi-division world champion, long-reigning champion um, in, in smaller weight class, coming up to 126. Um, I, I thought it was a good fight. I thought, you know, I, I picked Serrano, but I thought Bermudez had a chance to pull the upset. Um it didn't happen. It was pretty obvious. And, and look, Bermuda had some moments. She landed some shots. She landed some some good counter shots. Uh, but Toronto is just too much firepower. She's she's too good from the outside. She's too good from the inside. She's tight from the outside, hitting her with angles, coming forward. Uh, Serrano is the real deal. Nah, no pun intended. I didn't even do that on purpose. You know, the real deal is the real deal. She's a complete fighter. Um, I, I, I think, look, her feet are good. Her angles are good. The aggression is good. I mean, it was obvious from the first couple of rounds on that even between these two, which are two pound for pound women, you know, two of the top ten to twelve pound for pound women in the sport, that, that there were levels. Serrano was levels better than Bermudez, and the only question was, you know, with Serrano's firepower, could she get her out? And she did in the ninth round. Uh, she would have a body shot. Uh, put her down. It, it was obvious. It was a delayed reaction. It put her down. It was it was clear she wasn't getting up, um, and she didn't. Uh, it was a sensational performance by Serrano. It really was. And, and I, where did Serrano go from here? I don't really know. You know, she's in the featherweight division. Um, it's, but she goes up and down. The, you know, she can fight anywhere. You know, the Katie Taylor fight. I would love to see. I'd love to see her fight Katie Taylor. I know we were close to that before the pandemic, and that fell apart. Um, if boxing ever returns to to New York. You know, Matt Square Garden, I think that's the perfect fighter. They can do it over the UK. They can do it in Puerto Rico. They can do it a lot of places. It, it's such a fun fight. It's such a good fight. And uh, I think Serrano wins because it's just too much firepower. You know, I think if you put pressure on and, and, and you could hurt Taylor and you, and, and you can make her uncomfortable, you can beat her. And I think that's exactly what Serrano would do. Um, well, it's going to be interesting to see where she goes next. Um, like I said, I, I don't think she's the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter. Um, I, I, I think Clarissa Shields is, but I think offensively she's the most complete fighter. She's the most offensively gifted, most offensively complete fighter in women's sports. Um, and it's, it's been fun watching her. Um, what else was fun was, was watching the rest of this card. This was a really fun card. It really was. Um, in the co event, boy, we got to see uh, a Bantamweight prospect in Carlos uh, Caraballo. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, but uh, both Baez brothers, Leonard, Leonardo, and uh, Eduardo, were both uh, in action today. Uh, and Leonardo Baez, in, in, in the co-main event, um, 
was completely outclassed. And this was, uh, and he, Baez had been in tough. He was been in with Jason Maloney, been, been in with Julio Cesar Martinez. I mean, he'd been in with, with good opposition. Um, and it was supposed to be a tough fight um, for, for Carlos Caraballo. It, it was not. Um, Caraballo, his angles, his feet, he's got great feet. He's got great feet, quick feet. Quick hands. He's real accurate. He hit him with his three-piece uppercut <laughs> um, that, that that dropped him. I mean, he was spectacular. I mean, Carlos Caraballo is, I think he's 14-0 yeah, and 0 now. Um, he's got power, speed, like I said, his footwork, his angles. He's got great feet, and, and that's the most important thing. I think that guy is a, you know, the 118-pound division is going to be something to keep your eye on for a while now, and I, I think this guy might – be the best prospect in that division. You know, I, I think he's 14. Oh, now we can move him pretty quickly. Uh, we can absolutely move him pretty quickly. Um, the other fight on the card, um, and I'm going to say his name wrong too. Uh, it's a fight that I, I, I spoke highly of. Uh, Abimel Ortiz lost to Eduardo Baez, and he just, it was frustrating because um, he fought. Baez, Eduardo Baez, on the inside the whole time. You know, it's a guy that you can fight on the inside, but now you're fighting into Baez's hand. I, I thought he should have stayed more on the outside, kind of sniped him from the outside, used his reach, used his size, used his skills, but he didn't. It, it was a fun fight. So, I mean, all, all the fights were entertaining. Um, all offensive-friendly fights. And this was like probably the most entertaining fight of the three, even though it was, you know, the, the first fight, you know, was an undercard. Um, but it was a good fight. And um, I was a little disappointed at Ortiz. I, I think Ortiz could have shined on him. He could have used the skills a little more from the outside. Uh, but he was willing just to engage with him and fight him in a phone booth. Um, and, and he lost. I had it, I think, 9-1. I think the judges had it, too. Um, I ate one. But it was, it was an eight-round fight. Yeah. Uh, basically, Ortiz won one round in the whole fight. Um, maybe. He was in the, the fight. Was he was in the fight? It was close. It was competitive. It was just that, you know, uh, Baez was edging him. Baez was doing a little better work. Baez was coming on strong at the end of the round. I mean, Baez won the rounds, even though the fight was fairly competitive. All it was a really, really entertaining, fun card. Um, all three fights uh, were good. Um, you know, we got to see what I think is the second best pound for pound woman in the sport in, in Serrano. We got to see a young prospect. Uh, in, in Caraballo, who I think the world of, who I think is going to be a tremendous, tremendous prospect. He's got world championship skill. And then, um, you know, we got to see a good fight between another prospect, Ortiz, who I think will be back, and Baez. Um, I, I think we just uh, go back to a drawing ball with Ortiz. We just, he's got to get more discipline. He's got to fight his fight uh, in a really fun fight with Eduardo Baez. Um, but it's a really good card. Did you guys watch it? What did you think of uh, the Serrano fight? What did you think of... Uh, the Kai Bio fight, are you are y'all as high as him uh, as I am? Uh, let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Um, remember to like and subscribe, share on all forms of social media, 3D boxing, 3D boxing blog, text. Uh, it is so late here. It is th it, 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 um, it's so late here. I'm I'm losing my brain. Uh, from like and subscribe, share on all forms of social media. Uh, quick Hits comes at you twice a day, every day, eight to ten minutes, just to keep you up to date on all the latest boxing news and rumors. It is March 26, 2021. Ivan Calderon, who did some commentary on the Ring City USA card, um, is still not in the Boxing Hall of Fame, and that needs to change. Let's get the Iron Boy into the Boxing Hall of Fame class of 2021. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you, and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.